I like sitting by a smoker and drinking beer like any other guy, right? It's kind of fun, therapeutic. But sometimes I got shit to do. So do you. Sometimes you want to wake up at 6 a.m. and have the food ready by 4 p.m. You don't want to do much work. You're busy doing other stuff, getting ready for a party. What if I told you you could smoke anything for a long period of time using a 22-inch Weber kettle? Very easy. Set it, forget it, no maintenance at all. I'm going to show you how. All right, guys, this is super easy. Um, as you can tell, my Weber is kind of dirty. There's a huge poplar tree in my backyard, and it's been trying to pollinate my kettle. Anyways, so, so I'm just going to dump just a bunch, you know, a little pile of charcoal in here. Um, I don't like using like the cracked or the half ones. You know, I, I will I'll put, probably put them on top. Half ones like this, you're not going to want to use. I don't know if you can see that because um, it's just not going to be integrous to the structure of the snake. So we're going to use the square ones that are full. We're just going to start on my grates here, kind of for some support along the edge. And just we're going to start just uh, standing them up next to each other like so. It might take you, um, you know, three or four wobbly ones to kind of get them to stand up on their own. You know, kind of do your best to just keep them straight, standing straight up, nice and uniform next to each other. And that's pretty much it. It's self-explanatory. And then you just stack these things like this all the way around. What I do is I leave a gap right here. The width of the handle. If your kettle doesn't have a handle, um, I'd say that's about five or six inches. So it's going to start here and end here, and we're going to have a space in the middle here so it doesn't set each other on fire and it burns both ways. The idea is to burn from one side to the other. You don't have to go clockwise. You can go counterclockwise. I don't really care what you do, but leave that gap there so they don't touch each other. Um, if you want more heat, you certainly can light both ends and let them go this way, but that cuts your smoking time in half. It'll only burn for half the time. So just keep that in mind. All right, so here's the first layer, I call it, right? First row, first layer. This is good if you want to cook something, like if you're smoking bacon or doing jerky or beef sticks, stuff like that, this is, will give you a nice smoke, but it's a cold smoke, right? It's lower temperatures because there's only one row. You can add a little bit of wood chips or you can replace some of these briquettes with wood chunks, uh, but it's going to burn at a lower temperature. But So if you're doing a brisket or a pork shoulder, you probably want more than one row, right? So this is ideal for lower temperature. Um, smoking or cold smoking if you will so let's get back to the time lapse i'm going to do another couple rows and we'll be good to go Here's two rows. I'm gonna use these for another row, but two rows right next to each other. Look at this thing, look how beautiful that is. It's like, it's like fucking barbecue art, right? Um, I'm gonna do another one on the top, and I'm not gonna stand them up though. I'm gonna lay them down right in the middle like this. pretty three rows that should give us a cooking temperature of about 225 to 250 degrees give or take right 
Vents wide open on the bottom. I'm gonna leave my vents wide open on my lid. And when I light it, I'm gonna go clockwise, right? So I'm gonna start here, and I'm gonna go around. As this thing burns, I'm gonna come out here like every hour and just kind of turn the vent, right? Kind of just follow the burn around. That'll help with airflow, that'll help keep things lit, that'll help maintain your temperatures. I need to clean this thing. I'm gonna add wood chips, be right back. All right, so I got some Oklahoma Joe's cherry and apple wood chips, right? So what I'm gonna do is just take a little handful and I'm just gonna go on the inside, or the outside, right? Against the wall of the kettle, right, the outside. Just sprinkle a little bit of these chips amongst the coals. I'll show you in a minute what this looks like, but. And I'm gonna go just over halfway around. Not the entire way, because obviously it's not gonna take smoke the entire time this thing's burning but it might take smoke a little past the halfway point, right? So I'm just gonna make sure that I get as much smoke from these chips into the meat as possible. I'm mixing cherry and apple together. All right, here you go. So we've got three rows of charcoal all the way around, and then we've got the chips, cherry and apple, just on the outside. Um, yeah, I know a lot of you people on the internet are gonna be like, dude, you can't use wood chips. They're going to burn faster than the coals, blah, blah, blah. Dude, I'm telling you, I've done this many times, and it comes out fire every time. This is the important part. If you forget this, um, and you don't spritz, you'll probably dry out whatever you're cooking. I mean, unless you wrap it in foil, right? The fat, if there's a good fat content, you probably won't dry it out. But if you're doing stuff with less fat, you want to have a pan in there for water, apple juice, uh, fruit, any any juice you want to use, really. So I'm gonna throw that in there. Um, I used water last time because I didn't have any juice, but I think I think I've got some juice today, so I'm gonna put some juice in there. Um, Royal Oak tumbleweeds. I use those exclusively to light all my fires. Um, they work great. They light the charcoals just fine. Um, what we're gonna do is put two underneath the first two charcoals. I'll show you what that looks like too up close. All right, guys, now you can see the tumbleweeds in here. What I did was take the, the front briquettes and remove them, put two tumbleweeds in there, and then I just kind of covered them back up with the briquettes, right? There they are in there. So when you light these, it's just going to start the snake, and then it's just going to slowly burn all the way around. Let's get it lit. Oh, here's our juice in here. I'm using, like, some Aldi guava mango punch. Um... You can use whatever juice you want. It really doesn't matter. You can use water. Just, it keeps things hydrated in there, you know? It keeps it moist, keeps it from drying out. It's, this is a super effective, super efficient, no maintenance way to smoke food. And it's, it comes out fantastic every single time. So let's get this lit and we'll rock. All right, this thing is pretty much lit. So we're gonna get our tri-tip on here. Salt, pepper, garlic, mustard binder. It's right in the middle. This is gonna be so good. I'm like super excited for this right now. Try tip on, snakes lit, vents right over where it's burning. Keep that airflow going, keep it lit. Um, like I said, as this burns around, I'm just gonna rotate the vents. Just follow the burn. So now it's lit, the tri tip's on there you don't have to look at this thing for the rest of the day. Literally, I'm gonna look at this probably in four or five hours. It's probably gonna have the bark the color that I want, so I'm gonna wrap it in foil. It's a super effective, super fun way to cook food. Um, like I said, you can't load it up. You know, you don't want your snake to burn underneath the food, so that's why we put the one piece of meat in the middle. And uh, like I said, you can do packer briskets, pork shoulders. You know what? I'll make more videos doing those foods. I'll do a pork shoulder video. I'll do a pack of brisket. If you guys want to see me do anything else with this, you know, chicken or chicken wings or something, just let me know in the comments. All right, guys, so we're about four hours in. Ooh, man, it's looking good. That's where our snake started, and that's currently where it is. So you could probably get 12 hours out of this. This particular snake right here will probably burn for about 12 hours, but that looks pretty good. I like where it's at, so I'm going to wrap it and throw it back on. All right, so we've got her back on. Um, don't worry if you see the flames when you take the lid off. That's because of the rush of oxygen it's getting. 
once you put your lid back on, that flame will die down and it'll continue to smoke again. So we'll give that another two hours um, and then I'll probe it to see where we're at. I'm trying to go to 203, 205. So two hours, three hours, that might do it. All right, so this thing went out at 10 a.m. and it is 334. So five and a half hours, see where we're at. Definitely done, and we have, this is where it is right now, where the snake is uh, burning. So there's still half the snake left. So 10 hours, you get 10 hours out of a snake like this. So I'm gonna pull this off, and I wanna save half that snake. I'll just light it up another time when I wanna cook something else for five and a half hours, six hours. So I'm gonna close my vent, close my bottom vent. Let the coals die out. Um, again, so I can use them later. Pull this off. Perfect. See how easy that was? Build it, put a pan in there, put some water or juice in there, light it, season your meat, put it on there, set it and forget it, man. I rested this thing for about 10, 15 minutes. I'm just gonna cut it in half. Oh, man, this smells so good. Okay. Oh yeah, very tender. I did not trim the fat cap, so it's a little fatty on top. Very tender, very juicy, smells amazing. Now I used was salt, pepper, and garlic. SPG, choice for me. Now tri-tip is tricky because the grains run in three different directions. Looks pretty dang good to me. So good. Cooked it like a brisket, right? Brought it to about 160, 165 internal, wrapped it in foil, brought her home. Uh, I think I pulled it off at 205 internal. It's definitely a lot smaller than a brisket, <clears throat> but it tastes amazing. That's the snake method, that's how I do it. Again, you can use less rows for lower heat, more rows for higher heat. Um, that snake today would have burned for probably 10, 11 hours. Um, but this thing was done in five and a half, so. Amazing. Give it a shot. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel. I will do more videos on the Weber kettle if you guys want to see me do them because I really don't have a lot of videos using a Weber kettle. But I've been using it a lot lately. I really enjoy the snake method. You guys should definitely try this out. Let me know what you want to see me cook on a Weber kettle. See you next time.